Hello and welcome to another episode of Death by Bungie. There aren't too many more of these episodes coming up where I'm looking at my phone and looking for a successor to Bungie. Now, some of you are saying, great, I'm tired of these videos. Maybe some of you are saying that, but this has been a lot of fun and I think it's been pretty educational for me at least. I'm learning a lot about new crossbow brands, learning stuff I didn't know about certain brands. That's great, seeing what's offered out there. I should know that I've had a discussion going back and forth with a couple of friends of Bungie here recently commenting on, well, you didn't look at this model or you didn't look at that model. Totally get that, right? My goal with this initial review of websites is just to get a feel for each manufacturer. And the reason I'm looking at like the top model, so to speak, is because when a manufacturer puts their best foot forward, and they show us this crossbow or that crossbow, and this is the best that they have to offer, or at least in their minds, what they consider the best that they have to offer. That makes a big difference to me to show me what that manufacturer is capable of. And I think that's a good starting point to talk about this stuff. When we looked at 10 point recently, very clear I'm not buying the top most expensive 10 point model, at least not with that $1,500 scope installed, right? And a few people pointed out, and I thank you for this, that if you take that scope out of the equation, right, the, the zero Garmin scope, if you take that out of the equation, it's a lot cheaper. And it's also more consistent with my crossbow hunting style. And that I want to express also. When I'm looking at these crossbows, I'm looking at one that suits my hunting style that will allow me to continue to hunt the same way just a little bit better. I'm not interested in changing my hunting style, the way that I hunt. Why would I do that, right? Pretty late in the game to be doing that. I've been doing it for over a decade and I've had pretty good success with my method of crossbow hunting. So that's why they make different crossbows. Some crossbows are more suitable for your crossbow hunting method. It's going to be a little different from mine. So different strokes for different folks. That's why certain crossbows, there's no perfect crossbow. There is no crossbow that's best for everybody because everybody has different wants, needs, desires, and plans and strategies. All of that takes different crossbows. Today, we are going to look and see if there is anything to scorpid crossbows, anything at all. Is there any reason at all why I should consider Scorpid Crossbows as the successor to Bungie, Bungie, the newest addition to the Death by Bungie family? Yeah, there's reasons why I should consider them, right? That's why we're doing this video. So let's look this over and see what we got. We have Scorpid online store. I think that's probably a good place to start. Let's see what Scorpid sells. Shop.scorpid.com. That's pretty cool. Oh, and it tells us right off the bat that it is pronounced Scorpid. Thank you, Scorpid, for that. It's not uh, Scorpide, which, why is it spelled that way, right? Scorpid, if you, if you really, if you want to be Scorpion crossbows because you're fast and deadly and you strike deadly, right? Call them Scorpion crossbows. I don't know. But Scorpid, whatever, that's their name. Their reverse draw technology are both creations of crossbow innovator Jim Kempf. We have seen a theme in different crossbow manufacturers, haven't we? About the people who have been pioneers in the crossbow industry. Remember we talked about Bear X crossbows. Now, Fred Bear didn't directly contribute to the design of the Bear X crossbow, I'm betting that. But he's still like very important in the development of that company. Remember when we first started, we looked at Barnett. For example, Barnett crossbows, they were giving credit to Bernard Burnett, who started the company. When we looked at Darton crossbows, remember we looked at the history of Darton crossbows, and they talked about how they had been in the archery business for over 70 years, and their founder, Rex Darlington, was very instrumental in the development of that crossbow brand. In fact, they showed us pictures, I think if I remember correctly, of him and his wife hunting in Africa on a safari in Africa. And I commented at the time how I thought that was a pretty big deal. To me, that's important. I really like to hear about the history of these crossbow manufacturers and where they started. It gives you a feel for how important hunting is to them as a company. Is their design hunting related, developed toward hunters, or is it de developed for crossbow shooters, for target shooters? I don't care which, right? I mean, I think it's wonderful that we develop products, again, different crossbows for different people. But for me, I really like the hunting side of it. That's what's important to me. So I want a crossbow. It makes me, you know, that's something to consider, a crossbow brand that has developed around crossbow hunters. 
The technology that Jim Kempf created has now led Scorpid crossbows to be one of the most effective hunting tools to date. Again, with the hunting, I really like that. Now, I've looked at this website before. I am somewhat familiar with Scorpid. I have looked at them over the years and sort of followed their technology, but I haven't looked at this website recently. So I'm doing this a little bit off the cuff here. So bear with me on this and we'll see how that works out. I think for the most part, it'll be okay. But one thing we will see right off the bat, we're going to look at the Death Stalker. That's a popular model. And if we look at that, real quick the first thing you're going to notice is it looks different for most crossbows right that is not the way and this website does not want to cooperate but when we put that on the screen that way that looks different for most crossbows right i talked before about how these different designs of crossbows exist i talked to you before in the 10 point video i think it was how when i got into crossbow hunting over a decade ago we had basically two options we had compound crossbows limbs outstretched again a crossbow style but with cams at the end of it the cables all that and essentially that was the design then we also had at that time recurve style crossbows which is what i ended up with and that recurve design basically a recurve bow laid on its side across the barrel across the stock of the crossbow and you've got your recurve style bow we also have today, what we're seeing more and more is that more modern style of compound crossbow where they've taken the limbs, they've expanded the riser, they pushed it out a little bit. The limbs sort of are more parallel to the stock, more parallel to the barrel. By moving those limbs in, that's kind of a new design. That, to me, moves that design forward. Here, with this, we have a whole new design entirely, the reverse limb design. And the difference here is, is those limbs are no longer out in the front of the crossbow. The riser is no longer out in the front of the crossbow, in the very front of the crossbow along the stirrup. As you can see here, that's not the case. Instead, we have a crossbow that has the riser back by the trigger assembly. It has the limbs in a reverse position with the cams way out front. Now, this looks different. Looks alone should not be a reason to buy or not buy a crossbow. I am as attracted to a, a good looking crossbow as the next guy, right? And I've commented on that. There are certain looks that I like over other looks. This is an interesting design to me. It's very different. Now, when I got into crossbows over a decade ago, again, and I talked about this in my book, The Death by Bungie Crossbow Story, which is available on amazon.com in case you're interested. But when I got into crossbows way back then, and I first started looking at crossbows, this design was around. There were reverse limb style crossbows back in the day, but they were relatively new in concept, new in design and new to the market. And I thought, you know, Let's not jump on the bandwagon just yet. Let's go with a more tested design. And that's how I ended up with Bungie, a time-tested design. A design that has been tested for centuries. <laughs> you know, like the original crossbow design. No pulleys, no cams, nothing. Now we have this design, though, and here we are a decade removed from that. And I gotta say, it's still around. It's not only around, it's popular. And I get positive reviews from you friends of Bungie who watch these videos and I get positive feedback and comments and suggestions that I should look into this. The advantage of this reverse limb technology is that it increases your draw length. Okay, what you're doing by switching those around, all of a sudden now you got the, the pulleys, the cams clear out in the front and we're cocking from there all the way back. And you can see by this picture that now we've got a longer draw length that allows us to have more string to arrow contact as it travels down the rail. And that increases the speed of the arrow because the string is able to impart more energy on the arrow because it's touching it longer. A little bit longer. It's not doubling the amount of energy that can, it can put on the arrow, but it's increasing it, right? Every inch matters when it comes to draw length on something like that. One thing that I question from looking at it is balance. Because now all of a sudden we got the crossbow, the riser is now back in your face. It's right under the scope, right in front of the trigger. And does that change the overall balance of the crossbow? Scorpid users tell me absolutely it changes the balance of the crossbow for the better, okay? They reassure me that, hey, this is a well-balanced, comfortable crossbow to shoot. That's pretty cool. Okay, so I get positive feedback from that, okay? The other thing that this does that I kind of like, 
and we're talking about the cans, right? They're out in front of you now. When we looked at the Killer Instinct crossbows, you're holding that and the cams are right back here by your face almost when it's cocked. That more modern style of crossbow with the limbs in the normal, the normal direction, those limbs come back like this. The cams are here. You're shooting here. The scope is here. Your face is near those cams. Now, that's not a dangerous thing, but it is, an, it is a mental thing. It does mean that there's some action going on, some activity going on right back by your eyeballs. And maybe that means nothing, right? But does that cause you to flinch? Does it affect the way that we hunt, the way that we shoot? Maybe. And I'm, I'm just throwing that out there. Reassure me that that's not an issue. But you simply do not have that issue with these. There's no movement right by your eyes. You're back here by the scope. The limbs are back here. The risers are right in front of you. But the cams are in the cables and all the string movement is way out in front of you, farther away. So that makes a big difference. I do like the stirrup here, real big stirrup. I'm betting any arrow that is placed on this cocked crossbow. And they're showing us this crossbow without an arrow in the flight groove but it's cocked and it does have a pretty steep string angle. You guys can comment in the comments on the string life that we get with these scorpid crossbows in your experience. And I also want to point out one other thing here. When we look at the way that this is drawn, this is also a reverse draw crossbow, it appears to be, because the string is coming off the front of those cams so that the string, when uncocked, is all the way in the front. That's why these string bumpers, those when that st string is at rest, it's up against those string bumpers or pretty close. When you fire this crossbow, the string will make contact with those string bumpers. Okay, it won't go farther than that. That will reduce vibration. It'll stop the vibration once the arrow has left the string. So it's not affecting your speed negatively in any way, but it will block that string from going back and forth and continuing to vibrate, adding noise, all that sort of thing. Instead, it'll stop it right there. So that's a pretty good design. I like that. They just stick up there. They're mounted right on there. You can probably replace those little rubber feet very easily. But the point is, is that where these rubber feet are is where the string would be at rest. So we can see string travel. Look at the length that we have by using this design. The string in its cocked position, you see it here, clear back there. That arrow will have contact with the string from way back there all the way up to those string bumpers. That's a lot of string travel. That's an awful long time for a serving to be in contact with a rail that can increase serving wear. But by the same token, it's gonna impart a lot of energy in that arrow. That's what's cool about this design. In this reverse dross design, right, with the string on the front end of these cams instead of back here where the cables appear to be, like normally this is where your string would be, okay, right there in the center of the screen. If you didn't have a reverse draw and if you didn't have a reverse limb design anyway. So by putting a string all the way out there, we've redesigned, reversed the crossbow design and kaboom, you get all that extra string travel. So that's what's giving these crossbows their higher than average speed. That's pretty good technology. That is moving crossbow technology forward. That's innovation. I love it. I like the stock from what we're seeing here. You know me, I'm big on those. Uh, it's a thumb hole style stock, pistol grip style stock. Looks good to me. The open stock on the back make it easy to carry. If you got to carry it off to your side, something like that. This has, I don't know about their scopes or their optics. You may leave me comments. They would be well appreciated, very much appreciated. But it, the fact that it has a stirrup tells me that we might be able to rope cock this crossbow. Interesting. I'm kind of big on the rope cockers. If you hadn't heard, that's a priority for me. Something I'm interested in. What I don't like about this crossbow is for us to find out how much it costs, we have to go through and select different things. If I remember correctly, they give us for different models, they actually give us different poundages. So you get different speeds with different models based on what you select. But here, this crossbow would be 150 pound draw weight. That's going to be easy to rope cock, I'm betting. That is going to be something, because my crossbow bungee is 175 pounds, right? And that's a recurve. It has no let off. When I go to cock it, it's 175 pounds at the beginning. It's 175 pounds at the end. It's 175 pounds. Can you go all the way? No. All right, let it down slowly, slowly let it down. It'll be okay. <laughs> Letting go of it wouldn't be a good idea. With this crossbow, it's going to be 150 pounds when you start. 
and it's going to get a little bit easier with that lid off, I'm betting. Another view of this bad boy, we'll look at it. Holy cow, I have not seen that before. I love it. That is sweet. It's like reptile skin or something, like snake skin, which doesn't really go with the scorpion theme, but whatever, if that's what we're going for with the scorpion name. But this is just a really nice looking dip of a crossbow. I like it. I like that dip. You know, I played with the idea of doing a uh, aftermarket dip on Bungie. Bungie to make it black, maybe put some skulls on there or something. I don't know, you know make, do some dip. Dipping techniques, I'm into playing guitar and stuff, and that's something that's kind of big with the guitar players. They'll dip a body here and there, and that's pretty cool. I wonder if I were to dip bungee, is there a way to do that without ruining the limbs, adding weight to the limbs, slowing the crossbow down, shortening bungee's life, that sort of thing. At this stage, I'm not big on modifications unless they move my crossbow hunting forward, but I've always been curious about the dipping. So a technology that's caught on, it's bigger and bigger and more common. There are local folks engaging in it. So it'd be something I'd be willing to discuss. I do like the way that that Picatinny rail is set up on that scope that looks nice and solid. You put a scope on here, you'd be in good shape. You probably, they're showing me this one without a scope. And I, from what I remember, on the page we were just at, there's different drop downs. So you probably can buy this thing without a scope, put your own scope on it maybe. If that was the case, that'd be kind of nice. If that's our safety, which I think it is, we have a red for fire and a green for safe, I'm betting. And if that's our safety, I like that location. At least by looking at it, my hand's in the thumb hole stock, I can probably get my big old thumb up on that and move that safety without the deer seeing it. It's tight against the side of the crossbow. Very similar to Bungie with the hammer style safety up top. That's pretty slick. Some of these other crossbows, we looked at the killer instincts and you've got the safety back here. And someone had commented, well, I turn the safety off the minute the deer comes in. Okay, I mean, I don't do that. That's not what I do. So I want a crossbow that continues to do what I do. You want a crossbow that will allow you to continue to do what you do. So this one really is in the running here. I, I like that overall design. I like this color too. Comment on this color. Do you think this color matters? I really do like the style of this thing. And if I had a local Scorpion dealer, I'm not sure that I do, but I, I'm going to have to find one. Top down view. Well, look at this bad boy. What do we got here? That is a mean looking crossbow. Again, cocked. Uncocked. Do any of these pictures show us what it looks like uncocked? They do not. They are all cocked pictures of the crossbow. When they're uncocked, you get to see the limb travel and the limbs spread out a little bit more. This crossbow is a little bit wider than some of the models that we looked at. If you're into narrow, then you're looking at 10 point, center point, raven, maybe, right? For example. If the narrowness, to me, I'm not, it's not, I'm not adamant that I have the world's narrowest crossbow. I'm looking at something that is not as wide as Bungie. And I basically, the world is my oyster because every crossbow is not as wide as Bungie. Bungie, Bungie. is 36 inches wide and cocked. So everything is gonna be a step in the right direction. Genevieve's crossbow is 25 inches wide, uncocked. To me, totally satisfactory. I'll talk to you about Excalibur widths in an upcoming video. This is a good design. We again see how the riser is back here in your face. This really is the picture I should have started with. It shows you the reverse limb. We've got the rubber on here to reduce vibration. So they've thought of that. That probably reduces your speed, but at the same time, these limbs don't have the amount of travel that they do, like my big old Excalibur, where you've got several inches of limb travel. With those big old limbs on the old Excalibur, you've got a lot of limb travel when you fire that crossbow. So it's got to move the weight of that rubber a lot farther. That will reduce your speed. So I don't use those presently. It dropped me you know, 10 feet per second, 15 feet per second by putting those on my old Excalibur. But that is going to differ from one crossbow to another. I'd like to see an arrow placed in here because I don't know what they're using for arrows. Plus, I don't know how they look on the front end because, you know, that's big to me. It has to stay within that stirrup. And I'm betting, okay, I think it's a safe assumption. Very easy to tell once you try one out. But I'm betting that the arrow with a broadhead equipped on the front end of the arrow is going to stay within that stirrup. I'm sure it is designed if they had any common sense whatsoever, they designed it that way. So I'm not too worried about that. Black soft touch or mossy oak tree stand. It doesn't tell us. I'm betting none of those are that really hot red one. And they don't tell us what that red one is. It's like a sweet Corvette or something. It's the Corvette of crossbows. Kind of is because it's real fast. 
The Death Stalker 420 crossbow package, 420 feet per second. That's in the ballpark of where I want to be, somewhere between 350 and 450. That's good enough for me. I'm happy with that. Speed's based on a 370 grain arrow. What will it do with a proper hunting weight? I don't really want to hunt with the 370. I think if we do the numbers, I will deviate from the standard way of doing this video. And I'm going to go right now, in the middle of this very video, I'm going to go right now to the real tree arrow and kinetic energy, blah, blah, blah. We have an arrow weight of 370 and we have an arrow speed of 420. And I'm going to type that in generate. We're going to scroll down here. It mooses, right? But it mooses at 144 and 0.69. This momentum is important to me, right? So we got the 0.69 slugs almost impossible for me with any weight of arrow to reach that amount of momentum, that simple measurement, which isn't the whole picture of penetration of your arrow on a deer or a hog, but it's a factor and it's something that is important to consider in my opinion. That 0.69, pretty good number, but that's kind of light, right? For a modern crossbow, if we were to rank this with the other ones we've seen, that's toward the bottom. That's toward the bottom. At 420 feet per second, we're toward the bottom. If we up our broadhead size, okay, to a 150 grain, because this is with a 100 grain field point most likely, so that 370 would become 420, but that's going to slow down our crossbow. We're going to lose approximately 15 feet per second by adding that 50 grains to our broadhead. We'll generate it now, and we're still moving, but now we're at 152 and 0.755. That 0.755 puts you right in the mix. You're wonderful. 400 feet per second plus, and you're gonna be around 0.75 slugs of momentum. This is plenty of momentum to get the job done. You can up it a little bit further with a heavier arrow, get a little bit more momentum out of it. That's great. The key here is to remember is that both of those numbers are based on measurements of speed and weight. So if you want more momentum, you have to up your weight or increase your speed. I like to find a balance. It's kind of what I'm going for. I want some speed. I want to put some stank on that arrow, right? I want that thing to get there. And I want it to get there faster, not slower. But at the same time, I want it to really have an impact when it gets there. That's based on broadhead selection and other factors. But momentum's a big part of that. And that 0.755 tells me that we're going to be in the ballpark. I would consider even up in the arrow weight on that crossbow a touch more, just a touch more to maybe slow it down a little bit more. But again, find that balance, that sweet spot where we're in the 390s and still close to 400 feet per second, but we're now in the 0.8s of momentum. That would be pretty cool. And that's kind of the thing to play around with. That's, that's something that I look at on these things. Now I have to go back to scorpid crossbows and we're going to do that it's going to take us right back there kaboom we'll go back to the store we'll click on crossbows get you right back where we were we looked at the death stalker 420 let's go back on here one more time though and read a little bit more about that crossbow one piece carbon type technology new kempf tech integrated trigger housing and scope rail system i like how they're paying tribute and homage to the founder to the guy that innovated the guy that came up with these ideas mr kemp that's awesome lighter and more compact available in custom finishes which i really like we have a patented reverse draw technology so these are reverse limbs and they do consider it reverse draw it's very cool like we talked about flat black soft touch mossy oak finish new kemp trigger 16 and a half inch axle to axle uncocked. So it's probably 18 inches, maybe even 20 inches uncocked. That's still smaller than Bungie Jr., but it does make it larger, wider anyway, than a lot of our crossbows. 32 and a half inch length. Interesting. This does not look really long because of that, the wider limbs probably. It makes it look more square. But 32 and a half inches long, that's still pretty good. That's actually, this crossbow is comparable in size to the Excalibur Micro series of crossbows. Genevieve's Bungie Jr., a Micro 355 suppressor. That crossbow is about 31, 32 inches long. So it's a little bit smaller lengthwise than this one, but a little bit wider than this crossbow. 6.2 pounds weight without accessories. That's a pretty light crossbow. Non-folding stock, that's fine with me. 
optional limb saber butt pad, optional 1911 style pistol grips. That's something that uh, the grips, they change them from one to another. But when you have these 1911 style pistol grips, you can actually buy custom grips and put them on your crossbow. That's pretty cool if you like to customize things and tweak them out a little bit. I'm kind of, I've always done that a little bit here and there. As long as it doesn't change the functionality of it, I'm okay with it. Anti-dry fire device. I am somebody who needs that. <laughs> but we don't see that mentioned on a lot of these different models. If you notice that in these reviews, they don't tout that. They don't talk about it, but they all have it in this day and age. If you can think of a crossbow manufacturer that I've reviewed that does not have an anti-dry fire, let me know. I'd be curious to know. They haven't mentioned that, but I assume, maybe I shouldn't assume that, but I assume that every crossbow manufacturer in this day and age is putting on anti-dry fires. So maybe I'm wrong on that. Titanium Fasteners, America's Best Strings and Cables. America's Best is a brand name. I do know that. And Perfect Balance. Balance is something they talked about. Includes bow and a rope cocker, scope not included. I'm kind of interested in that. Uh, and the price isn't even that bad. Uh, can you uncock them? That's a thing that I'm interested in. Um, you can cock them with a rope because it comes with a rope cocker. And I don't even see them selling me some chintzy add-on crank system so maybe you don't maybe you don't need those uh i'm more interested in them. this whole crossbow series of looking at these things i really shouldn't have done this because now i'm looking at this and i'm like oh this is the crossbow i'm gonna buy <laughs> so you know that's where we're at what are you gonna do what are you gonna do boy and here's something i've gotten to can you imagine this being part of the logo to death by punchy. You know? <laughs> One of the things that I, I hesitate to change is the fact that I carry my crossbow on my shoulder. I have always done that. I've walked through the deserts of Arizona. I have walked through woods in Pennsylvania and Maryland and carried that crossbow without a sling on my, on my shoulder. And it's a big nine pound crossbow. I carry it on this shoulder with the limbs up and down and it sits right here perfect. The quiver's right here out of the way and the scope is pointing out there nice and safe. And then on this shoulder, I'll carry it here and I'll walk with it and all that good stuff. And it, the quiver's out of my way and the scope's out of, is protected. It's perfect and I can control it and I can move it left to right. It's beautiful. It is the way that I like to carry the crossbow. I don't see me carrying this crossbow that way. That doesn't mean much, okay? But I need to hear from friends of Bungie with experience with these crossbows. Can you hold it out in front of you, walk through the woods on a spot and stalk? Is that doable? Can you carry it on your shoulder or how do you carry it through the woods? Do you carry a sling? Very interesting crossbow, very interested in this. I am gonna look at the Aculeus. 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 Crossbow. I'm gonna click on that here and we will look at that poundage. Now this is where they get a little funky. You can buy the 110, the 135, 160, and 180. And we'll go with the 180. 180, because we want to find out how much this thing, how fast does it shoot? I'm betting 180 shoots a lot faster. And that comes with like two crank systems probably, right? I don't know. So this one, 370, 480 feet per second with a 370 grain arrow based on the tried and true Orion platform. The Acule... Yeah. Aculeus. This crossbow features a non-folding buttstock with an AccuDraw cocking mechanism. All kinds of cool stuff on here. This one's 18 and a half inch power stroke. That's pretty long power stroke for a crossbow. We see numbers, you know, of 14 inches, all that kind of stuff. And but when we get into 18 inches, again, that's where they're getting their additional speed. That's pretty cool innovation. That's pretty good technology. I like that. 34 and a half inch overall length. So this thing, without the butt pad, this is a long crossbow. Are we allowed to look at a picture? Can't blow up the picture. That's not helpful. Yeah, it's not gonna let me blow up that picture. But this crossbow, I can't even blow up the page. Some of these crossbows are getting real short to the point where the arrow sticks way off the end of the crossbow, and I don't like that. Don't like it one bit. It's a safety problem. It is a practicality problem for me. It's not what I wanna see. This crossbow, they've kept the length. When you got an 18 and a half inch draw length, understand that the string is gonna be in contact with the arrow more than half of the length of the crossbow. That's a pretty big deal. And that's the reason we're seeing this. That's why we're seeing this lengthy crossbow. This crossbow is a little bit longer when it's 32 inches long. I don't have a problem with that. Perfect balance, extreme shootability. Extreme shootability, there we go. 
We've got extreme shootability. So now we've got, actually, I don't remember other crossbow manufacturers talking about the types of shootability. So we only have one type of shootability, two types, I guess. We have regular shootability, which is most crossbows. And then we have the extreme shootability of this crossbow in capital letters. It's in capital letters too. So you know it's extremely shootable. Interesting. Here's another observation. Nowhere in these descriptions have we seen the word accurate. Think about that. Am I wrong? The word accurate does not appear on this website. We don't know what kind of accuracy this crossbow has. I'm hoping that they have a reputation for accuracy. Comment on that. Let me know your thoughts. We saw the hyper accuracy of the Barnett's. We've seen extreme accuracy with some models. We've seen the hard hitting accuracy of the mission crossbows, right? And this one doesn't have any sort of accuracy. We don't even know what kind of accuracy we're getting. Maybe it's just average accuracy. So that's just a running joke on these little videos. But, but that is interesting. They don't talk about accuracy at all. So let me know, are you guys accurate out to 50, 60 yards with these things, 100 yards, whatever? Because accuracy is number one in crossbows. It's number one in crossbow hunting to me. That's a fact. It's in my book, right? So that's what I say. And Genevieve reminds me of that from time to time. Crossbow and your choice of draw weight, Hawk XB30, that's the same manufacturer. Hawk makes some good scopes. I've not used them, but they're on a lot of different manufacturers and people give me good feedback about the Hawk scopes, generally speaking. Here is the downside of that scope though, is that I have really come to love the scope on Bungie. Bungie. It is a Twilight DLX from Excalibur. It's just massive and it lets in a lot of light. That's gonna be hard to give up. You could take that scope and put it on here, but that's a 60 yard reticle max. And maybe that's enough, maybe that's fine. If I feel weird putting an Excalibur scope on a Scorpid crossbow or an Excalibur scope on a Raven crossbow or on a Killer Instinct crossbow or what have you. Don't, doesn't that seem weird? But let me know your thoughts on that too. A lot, a lot of things you can let me know your thoughts on on this video. I like that about these videos. That's one of the things of this style of video that I kind of like. But four arrow quiver, nice, and other options available. So I can get at least a four arrow quiver. You gotta have at least four arrows, right? You might shoot four deer. You aren't gonna shoot four deer with three arrows. Come on. Grim Reaper fixed or mechanical broadheads. Why does Grim Reaper make a fixed blade? Come on. I mean, <laughs> if I was shooting Grim Reapers, it's for one reason and one reason only. 12 arrows, it comes with 12 arrows. Scorpid spec, Black Eagle arrows, 0.001. I'm really liking what I'm seeing here. Thank you folks at Scorpid for putting together some really nice packages here. That's pretty interesting. String stops, scope rail, comes with a scope rail. That's nice if you wanna use it. Limb saver sling and butt pad and Scorpion Venom lube kit. Scorpion Venom, that is the same rail lube I've been using for over a decade. Well, that is a neat looking set up for a crossbow package. Price-wise, we're in there. I will do some numbers on this 480 guy, this real fast guy, and we'll see how he ranks. We'll tuck him into the overall scope of things on the Realtree Aero Momentum Calculator. We will tuck him in there and see how he ranks and overall what the speed is for that model and for the 420. I can tell you based on this, I am very interested in Scorpid crossbows. They are a very interesting design. The fact that it's been around for 10 years while I've been out in the woods hunting with Bungie and it's still around, that design is still around, tells me, yeah, that's pretty time tested. That is a tested design that is worthy of consideration, right? So thank you for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts and answers to all of my various questions. This is another one of those videos where I came up with a lot more questions than answers. Thank you for that. Thank you. And until next time, all hail Bungie. Bungie.